Good evening. I'm Tails Lim Martinson. And I'm Gabrielle Durham. Welcome to your Tails London Gardens Real Estate Weekly News for March 24, 2021. In Boulder, Colorado, calls mount for Democrats to enact gun control reform and wave for Boulder Massacre. Amy Rose is here at one of the stores. Amy, are you there? Tails Lind and Gabrielle, calls are mounting to rapidly enact meaningful gun control reform after the second tragic mass shooting in under a week. The 10 victims of the massacre at a King Super's grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, have now been identified as Denny Stong, Nevin Stanisic, Ricky Old, Trelona Berkowiak, Suzanne Fountain, Tara Liker, Kevin Mahoney, Lynn Murray, and Jody Waters. All 10 of them, including Officer Eric Talley, who was one of the police officers who responded to the shooting, was shot and killed. The suspect, 21-year-old Ahmad Alaliwi Alyssa has been charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder and one charge of attempted murder. Police say he purchased an AR-556 pistol less than a week before Monday's massacre. Family members say they believe Alyssa suffered from mental illness, including severe paranoia. President Biden called on Congress Tuesday to pass new restrictions on gun laws. He requested me to read the statement, I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future and to urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to act. We can ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines in this country once again. The White House also said executive action on guns was being considered. Meanwhile, the Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing on reducing gun violence. This is Connecticut Democrat Richard Blumenthal. He told me to read his statement out loud, inaction has made this horror completely predictable. Inaction by this Congress makes us complicit. Now is the time for action to honor these victims. The mass shootings in Atlanta and Boulder are also prompting even louder calls for Democrats to end the filibuster as Republicans are expected to block passage of any significant gun control reform. From King Supers, Amy Rose, TGR Weekly News, and a moment of silence for those 10 people killed, that's for sure. In worldwide news, Philippines tightens lockdown amid new surge. On top of that, Brazil reports record 3,200 COVID-19 deaths. Does that mean they return back as zombies trying to eat the living people? Heather Henderson, who is the mother of Quincy Henderson, reports with more information. Heather, are you there? Thanks, Gabrielle. The World Health Organization is warning most regions of the world are seeing an increase in COVID-19 infections. Southeast Asia has the highest proportion of new cases, which shot up by nearly 50% over the last week. The Philippines registered a record high of over 8,000 daily COVID-19 cases this week as some hospitals near capacity. The current surge has led to increased restrictions in the sprawling Metro Manila region. Much of the Philippines has been under the longest and strictest lockdown in the world as many struggle with hunger and loss of income. Rights groups also warn authoritarian President Rodrigo Duterte is using coronavirus restrictions to further consolidate power. In Brazil, COVID-19 deaths continue to soar, topping a record 3,200 fatalities Tuesday. Brazil is second only to the U.S. in total deaths and infections. Heather Henderson, Quincy's mother, TGRE Weekly News. Good luck on watching this, son. And my son, she means her son Quincy Henderson, who we can give a shout out to very soon. There's definitely no clear winner in fourth Israeli election in under two years, forcing Netanyahu to seek coalition. Felicity Fox has more on that story. Felicity, are you there? In Israel, early vote tallies show Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party in the lead but still short of a majority, leaving him to appeal to other right-wing leaders, and possibly a small Arab party, in the hopes of forming a coalition. If Netanyahu or others fail to do so, Israel could be headed toward a fifth election to determine the country's next leader. I'm Felicity Fox reporting from Israel. Thanks Felicity. In military news, a military crackdown on anti-coup protests in Burma claims life of a seven-year-old girl. Let's go to Kyle Broflovsky on the scene. Kyle, are you there? In Burma, a seven-year-old girl was fatally shot by security forces becoming the youngest known victim of the deadly crackdown on protests since the February 1 military coup. Her father was reportedly the target of a raid, and the young child was killed at home, sitting in his lap. 
Save the Children says over 20 children have been killed in the crackdown. Protesters launched a silent strike today in an effort to shut down towns and cities across Burma. On Monday, the European Union and the U.S. imposed sanctions on individuals and groups tied to the coup. Some rights groups say the sanctions don't go far enough and should target all of the military junta's economic interests. From Burma, Myanmar, Kyle Bruflovsky, Tailslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News. Well, Kyle, thank you for that news report. Well, from Ethiopia, Ethiopian Prime Minister Agbaya Ahmed acknowledges Eritrean soldiers' involvement in Tegra conflict. Knuckles the Echidna always reports from Ethiopia, so Knuckles, are you there this time? Yes, I'm in Ethiopia this time. Anyways, Prime Minister Ebedi Ahmed have acknowledged for the first time Eritrean soldiers crossed into the northern Tigra region and were involved in the bloody conflict that erupted in November. Harrowing witness accounts have emerged of Eritrean soldiers killing Tigrayan men and boys and committing acts of sexual violence, including against displaced people. The UN has said multiple parties may have committed war crimes and crimes against humanity since the start of the conflict. I am Knuckles the Echidna, TGR News, reporting live from Ethiopia the second time. The United Nations warned that one million could be displaced in Mozambique's Cabo Delgado region. Daisy Alvarez reports on that story. Daisy, are you there? In Mozambique, the United Nations warns up to one million people could be displaced by June amid the escalating violence in the northern Cabo Delgado province. Some 2,000 people have been killed since 2017, when fighters allied with the Islamic State group began an anti-government insurgency. This month, the Biden administration declared the insurgents a foreign terrorist organization, and sent U.S. Green Berets to Mozambique to train soldiers in counterinsurgency. Amnesty International said in a new report published this month that all sides in the conflict have committed war crimes, including the insurgents and government forces. This has been Daisy Alvarez reporting live in the Cabo Delgado region in Mozambique. There is one quarter of civilians killed in Yemen from 2018 to 2020, which are children. Sandra Evans, or Sandy, reports live from Yemen. Sandy, are you there? In Yemen, a new study by Save the Children has found that children made up at least a quarter of civilian deaths killed in the U.S.-backed. Saudi-led war between 2018 and 2020. The group says at least 2,300 children were killed during that time, though the true death toll is likely much higher. Earlier this month, the World Food Program warned Yemen is headed toward the biggest famine in modern history, projecting around 400,000 Yemeni children under the age of five could die from acute malnutrition this year as the Saudi war and blockade continues. I am Sandra, or Sandy, Evans. Reporting live from a school in Yemen on TJRE Weekly News. Two people are dead in record-breaking Australian floods. Chief Correspondent Microsoft Sam cannot make it because he is still recovering from his fifth-degree burns, so I'll have Chief Correspondent Abby English report live in Australia instead. So Abby, are you there? Well, get real, I am in Australia, where at least two people are dead and over 40,000 have been evacuated from Sydney and other parts of New South Wales after the region was battered by record rains, which triggered historic flooding. Scientists warn such extreme, deadly weather patterns are becoming Australia's new normal as global heating worsens. I am Abby English, Chief Correspondent for Tailslandy and Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, reporting live from Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Now we go back to Tales London Gabrielle in the studio. Hope Sam recovers soon. Thanks Abby for being the backup correspondent for this week's news report. Indigenous environmental activist Juan Carlos Cruz Escalante has been shot dead in Honduras. Silver the Hedgehog has more information regarding the unexpected death. Silver, are you there? Tales London Gabrielle, I am in Honduras, where another indigenous linker environmental activist has been assassinated. 41-year-old Juan Carlos Eros Escalante, who was fighting against a hydroelectric dam in northwestern Honduras, was reportedly shot to death in front of his children. At least 12 environmental activists and land and water defenders were killed in Honduras last year. Violence has skyrocketed in the country since the U.S.-backed 2009 coup and under President Juan Orlando Hernandez, a key U.S. ally, Silver the Hedgehog, Tales Lundian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, in Honduras. A couple of Guatemalan indigenous leaders seek U.S. asylum and demand justice for water and land defenders back home. 
Blaze the Cat reports live from a Guatemala asylum. Blaze, are you there? In Texas, two indigenous leaders who were forced to flee Guatemala in 2019 are denouncing the ongoing violence against indigenous land and water defenders, and demanding justice for indigenous political prisoners and assassinated leaders. Gaspar Cobo and Francisco Chavez are now seeking asylum in the United States. They were stuck in the border city of Juneris for over a year under Trump's Remain in Mexico policy and were ultimately allowed to enter the U.S. after receiving death threats from a local drug cartel. The two were recently released from an ICE prison in El Pozo and held a virtual press conference. As a matter of fact, here is one of the indigenous leaders now. We are not in the United States because we are searching for better living opportunities. We are here by force. The best opportunities should be in our communities, and these opportunities do exist in Guatemala, but, sadly, we are unable to live there because Guatemala is a failed state. Chavez is a survivor of a 1982 massacre orchestrated by U.S., backed Guatemalan army officials and was a key eyewitness in the genocide case against dictator Efrain Rios Montt. Cobo has long advocated for survivors of the genocide. I am Blaze the Cat. Talslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, reporting live from Guatemala. A jury selection is complete in Derek Chauvin trial for murdering George Floyd. We have Jessica Milton at the courthouse. Jessica, are you there? In Minneapolis, a jury has been selected for the trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin, who killed George Floyd on May 25, 2020, by kneeling on his neck for over nine minutes. The jury is made up of one black woman, three black men, three white men, six white women and two women who identify as multiracial. Opening statements are set for next Monday. I am Jessica Milton reporting live from Minneapolis on TGRE Weekly News. Same as last week, Columbia student workers continue their strike for fair wages, protection from harassment and even discrimination. Last week's correspondent was Maxine Rutland, a K95 member. So she is with us this week at Columbia University this week. Here in New York, over 3,000 research and teaching assistants at Columbia University are on day 10 of their strike demanding fair wages, improvements to health care and child care provisions. Workers are also asking for third-party arbitration in cases of harassment and discrimination. Democracy Now! and TGRE Media spoke to some of the strikers. But I am going to read what some of the strikers had said. Kevin says, Columbia, I think likes people to have the impression that every course at this university is taught and made happen by an August tenured professor who's been working here for 40 years and wears a tweed jacket. But in reality, this university does not work without graduate students. Acknowledging our union is acknowledging that, and that's what we want to make happen. Yasemin says, we are at an $11 billion institution. The president of this institution is getting paid $4.6 million in salary. And the majority of us who make the work of this university possible, who enable its mission, are not able to afford the rents. This has been Chief Correspondent and K95 member Maxine Rutland reporting for TGRE News at Columbia University in New York. That's the second time we hear from Maxine this week. Senate confirms Vivek Murthy is served in general. Shalane the Young is Deputy Director of the Office of Management and Budget. Rhonda Raven is there at the White House in Washington, D.C. Rhonda, are you there? The Senate has confirmed Vivek Murthy to be Surgeon General, reprising the role he filled under President Obama. Murthy was a coronavirus advisor to Biden during his campaign and transition. The Senate also confirmed Shalanda Young, as Deputy Director of the Office of Management and Budget. Young, who was the Democratic Staff Director for the House Appropriations Committee, is favored by many powerful Democrats to lead the Office of Management and Budget, after Neera Tandon withdrew her nomination early this month. I am Rhonda Raven, Talslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, reporting live from the White House in Washington, D.C. The White House to add EPI liaison after sends. Duck from the Hornet Probe has lack of Asian American appointees. Rebecca Hale or Becca Sparkles reports from the White House this time. Becca Sparkles? Are you there? Democratic Senators Tammy Duckworth of Illinois and Macy Horna of Hawaii step back from their threat to block upcoming votes on Biden's nominees who are not people of color in protest over the lack of Asian Americans named to top positions. The Senators said they received assurances from the White House late Tuesday, which vowed to add a senior-level Asian American Pacific Islander liaison. 
Rebecca Becker Sparkles Hale, Tales Landian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, at the White House in D.C. Two different reporters at the White House in Washington, D.C. this week. A Standing Rock water defender has been jailed after refusing testimony to protect fellow protesters. Carolina Ramirez has more on this story. Carolina, are you there? Advocates are calling for the release of Standing Rock water protector Steve Martinez, who has been behind bars for over three weeks on contempt charges. Martinez refused to give testimony before a federal grand jury about injuries to Sofia Wilonski, a water protector whose arm was severely wounded during a police crackdown on anti-pipeline protests in 2016. Martinez says prosecutors are trying to shift the blame for Wilonski's injuries from law enforcement to water protectors. Carolina Ramirez, Tailslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, in the Standing Rock Indian Reservation. The Evanston City Council is paying housing-related reparations in Meshamwood first. Samantha Munoz has more on this story. Samantha, are you there? In Illinois, the Evanston City Council has agreed to pay black residents reparations for historic housing discrimination, making it the first U.S. city to adopt such a measure. The city will distribute some $400,000 to up to 16 families to be used toward housing-related costs. The money comes mostly from a $10 million fund of marijuana tax revenues. This is DeLois Robinson whose family was subject to the racist practice of redlining in Evanston. You know, it kind of deals with your self-esteem. And so it's a thing of, am I good enough to be able to stand on my own and say, no, I want property here, or I want to cross the redlining. In related news, earlier this month, Catholic Jesuit priests vowed to raise $100 million in reparations for descendants of people it forced into slavery. Samantha Munoz, Tailslandian Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, in Evanston, Illinois. Thank you Samantha for your news report in a city outside Chicago. And now we go to Miles Tails Prenger with a weather report. In the Cheeseville San Angelo metro area, it is 88 with clear and sunny skies. The same goes for the Caden County Tri-City area with a high of 90, and all cities within the Stepford County vicinity with a high of 94. Now let's go to Darren A. Nichols from the Microsoft Traffic Center. Well. This is a very serious problem, because the tolls for the Tailslandian Riverside Highway, both east and west, will open on Monday of next week. Right now, there is slow moving traffic at the entrances of both highways. The tolls are $3 as I speak. Let's go to Sonic the Hedgehog with our sports. There is spring training still going on for the Greyhounds. The Tokyo Olympics, usually scheduled for last year, has been rescheduled. More information regarding that will come soon. And here is the stock market for today. Belinda Carlisle, are you there? The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.9%, or 308.05 points, closing at 32,423.15, snapping its gains from Monday. Notably, 22 components of the 30 stock index ended in red while 8 finished the day in green. That's all we have for you today. I'm Tails Lynn And I'm Gabrielle Durham. This has been your weekly news for March 24, 2021. Please arrange your spring break plans ahead of time to avoid getting mixed up. Have a good rest of your day. This is Tails Gardens Real Estate Weekly News, signing off.